No, no, there's no way that there's a justifiable reason to build a controller that looks like this, unless... What we're looking at here is called the Vertibox. It's the weirdest shaped thing I've ever had on this channel. And you can see that I can put my hands on it and supposedly play fighting games like this instead of using a controller more like this. This is the standard button box, all button controller layout that you've come to know and love. And when you play on a controller like this, you usually put one hand over here, one hand over here, and then you can press the jump button with either thumb However, when you use a controller like this, you run into the same problems that you have with any keyboard style control, which is now your hands are in the, I believe, prone position. And so you have to be careful in all the same ways that you would have to be careful if you just use a keyboard to type for work, you can end up with serious wrist issues. Because you're doing something kind of unusual, like holding down buttons left, down, right, like this with your left hand, you're putting a lot of extra pressure into the button to hold things down. Especially if you play games like Undernight, you're holding buttons down on the right side as well. So, is this controller, the Vertibox, going to solve those issues. Now when I have it facing you, you can see that there are some useful buttons here on the front panel, but if I turn it around so that I can actually put my hands on it, you can see that my left fingers go over here. I presume that these are the left, down, and right buttons. And then on the right side, I've got my action buttons, the same that you would have on any arcade stick. Six main action buttons, and then you've got your sort of macro keys. Then if you flip it over to the top of the controller, you can see that I've got some jump buttons. All my buttons fall right in the perfect place if I put my hands onto the controller like this. I'm suddenly having flashbacks to Men in Black when he has his like fingerprints removed from his fingers. <laughs> now I don't know if the Vertibox is a prototype or if they've already started selling it, but mine did not come with any instructions in the box. And the main thing I'm interested to know actually is whether these buttons here on the top are both active at the same time. But the main takeaway is that whether you like to jump with your left thumb or your right thumb, it looks like we've got both buttons on the left side and the right side so you can choose. It's got some really nice 3D printed molded kind of pads here that make it really comfortable to put your hands there, but that you can't actually rest your hands on it and press the buttons at the same time. Your thumbs just don't really reach. The second thing we have to point out about this controller is look how big this thing is. When you bring a controller to a tournament, usually it's flat like this, or it's got a stick coming out of it, but you can generally fit it into a bag. And many of the arcade sticks these days, you, most people are just replacing the arcade lever with something like a Lynx mod. Good luck putting this into any of the bags you own. Even though, yes, it's going to be easy to <laughs> carry it. I would just love to see someone actually carrying this to a tournament. These buttons are much further apart than I would normally have them when I build a controller myself. And then the buttons for the actions on the right side, these are even further apart. And weirdly enough, not sure if you can see it, but they're at different angles. So this is like one angle and then this is like the other angle. And if you look at it from the side, you can see that's not actually flat. Your hands are going to be flat like this or like this. I guess they're just assuming that because you're gonna stretch your fingers out but not move your wrist, that maybe they'll be hitting at a flatter angle. We don't know what it's going to be like until we actually try it out in some games. So it's time to get out some fighting games and try the Vertibox controller. All right, so I've got Street Fighter V booted up and I've plugged in this. It's the Vertibox controller. There are so many buttons on here. It's kind of confusing, but I'm not actually that scared because technically speaking, this is a controller I'm familiar with. It's got three direction buttons here on the left. It's got a jump button here on the top and it's got my action buttons here on the side. The ring finger, this moves me left. I've got my middle finger. This is what crouches me down. My index finger, which moves me to the right. So just like a standard all button controller, and it's using the same SOCD rules as most of these controllers where pressing both at the same time, left and right at the same time will give you neutral. If I press down like this, I've got my left thumb to jump. And as you can see, SOCD rules means that if I'm holding down both at the same time, I get jump instead of just neutral. I'm not gonna use the one on the left because generally speaking, I find it easier to, well, my muscle memory has it for me that I use my right thumb to jump and my left fingers to move around. So that's enough of the movement. Let's see how the action buttons work. I've got my right hand over here and if I press these three buttons, I've got all my light, medium and punch buttons. And if I move my hands back over here, I've got my light, 
medium and strong kicks as well. Presumably down here, I've got my L1 and L2 buttons, which I can set to shortcuts like V trigger or L2, which is going to do my V skill. But what you really want to know is how is this going to feel to actually play in practice? Let's see how much of my muscle memory actually stayed intact. So I'm going to try and jump forward, jump backwards, left, right. It feels, <laughs> feels like I'm playing the game on its side. I hold down my index finger and then tap the left button really quickly, like so. I can do my fast dashes. I can also do it the other way fast back dashing. Pressing the jump button and a direction at the same time, I can do my jumps. I can do neutral jumps, forward jumps. So something I do for dragon punches is I use the Street Fighter V shortcut, which is forward, down, and then jump and punch at the same time. And I'm, I'm missing the button because I can't see what I'm doing. At the moment, I have to look down at the controller and then kind of tilt my head off to the side and kind of look at the controller and go, hmm, is it something over here or is it something on the, on the other side? What a bizarre, what a bizarre idea. So forward, down, jump, punch. Okay, something is not right with this controller. Normally on an all button controller, if you press forward, down, and then jump, you would get forward jump because the down just gets immediately canceled. So all you've got left is the forward and the jump. But on the VertiBox in its default mode, if I press forward, down and jump all i get is down so the jump has been completely switched off wait a minute okay the socd rules are different depending on which side you're on so i'm not getting my forward jump on the left side if i do it from the second player side works just fine i've got a large number of dip dip switches here on the base of the controller and i have a feeling they have something to do with the SOCD rules. All right, I've done some digging online and there is an official vertiboxarcade.com website. This does actually allow you to change various things like the jump button. At the moment, I've got the jump button on the right thumb and I've actually managed to disable the left jump button. So if I wanna be tournament legal and only have one jump button, you can actually do that just fine. And there are a number of other things that you can change in terms of modes. So at the moment, I'm in mode two which means that if I hold down the left button, if I press right, it will override. So the most recent input will take priority over the one that was held down from before. This is not allowed in certain tournament rules, but there are some tournament rules where this is allowed. Anyway, the important thing is that you can switch between them both, but I prefer to use the more common mode, which is apparently called mode one. So I'll hold down this turbo button and I'll press the right button over here and now I'm in mode one. So it's actually really easy to do. It's very nice because now I can go back to left and right equals neutral. And this is the mode that I prefer and know better. Unfortunately, there is no way to fix the jump not working correctly in the SOCD. I can only assume that there's just been some sort of mistake in the PCB, but this is something that presumably is very easy to fix because as we can see, physically speaking, it can work, it's just that it doesn't work on the left side. So I'm pretty sure that is something that will be fixed in the future, but let's talk about all the other stuff on the controller that we can have a look at that is working correctly. Things like throws. Normally you would want to press, you know, two buttons at the same time with two fingers like this, but as you can see, I'm now pressing them at an angle. So when I press the, when I press the shortcut for throw with one finger like this, I'm kind of bending my fingers backwards or I can, you know, can have my fingers straight. It's just kind of awkward to not have these buttons completely flat. So immediately that is one of the trade-offs that you will have going for a, a VertiBox ergonomic style controller because yes, it's really great for things that only involve pressing buttons one at a time like this with your right hand, but anytime you need to do these two button combinations, it's always gonna feel a little bit awkward. It's not something that hurts your fingers, but again, I've only been playing for a few minutes. I wonder after hours of playing, how tired I'll get of having these not be flat. I suppose the idea is that you should be able to just bend your fingers like this to go from the top row to the bottom row without having to move your palm. But I don't really feel like I would want to do that anyway. My fingers are already kind of too long for this. If I bend my hands around like this, as you can see, it's kind of bending too far backwards. Then I can get my fingers to be the right length to do this. But now my hands are bent like this against the control. I want my wrist to be flat out like this, not like this, like this. So this is just one of the trade-offs that you're going to find with this new generation of 
highly ergonomic controllers is that we're probably going to need like an S size, M size, and an L size, or a triple XL size. But also just from a design standpoint, I don't really feel like having to bend my fingers around like this is, is necessary at all. On a basic level though, I do like having the thumb button up here at the top. I think that this works just fine. If I go back over here, you can see like, pressing my left hand and my right hand, there's nothing unnatural about having my left hand all the way on the left side and my right hand all the way on the right side. Instead of having them flat like a normal all button controller, having them around the sides like this doesn't actually feel that unnatural. I mean, I haven't really practiced any of this stuff and it's already working kind of just fine. The only thing that feels unnatural is how highly specific this is to the hand position of the person who designed it. Something I'm kind of finding right now is that when I want to do this combo, which is two punches and then a kick, it's very simple. Punch, punch, kick. I want to bring my finger in like this. And can you see what happens when I bring my finger in? I curl my finger in, and instead of curling to this position here, underneath the light punch to the light kick, the light kick is actually up here to the left. And so really, to play this controller properly, I have to like tilt my finger up like this, so that my fingers follow the, the curvature of this, this ergonomics here. But as you can see, if I tilt my fingers up like this, now I'm miles away from these L buttons. The other thing is that the buttons are really far apart. If I just show you the side over here for the direction buttons, my fingers really want to be this close together, but on this controller, they're like really far apart. I feel like spreading my fingers like this far apart to reach these buttons for a long period of time is gonna be kind of painful on my fingers. Whatever, I don't know exactly which muscle it is that it like pulls the fingers apart, but it, it kind of already feels like a bit of stress. I think I knew that this would happen, but if you rest your hands on the palm rest right here, your hands are now nowhere near high enough to actually press these buttons. So they're useful when you're in between matches and also just helps the controller stay steady on your lap because it's got bigger wings to rest on your thighs. But it's not going to be very helpful for resting your hands on in its current state because as you can see, my hands are too low now. So really the only way for me to use this controller is to have my palms pushed up against this part of the controller or just have them hovering. And honestly, because I'm quite used to having my hands hover, this is very easy for me to do. It does feel like I've got less stress on my arms. I, I'm, I'm not used to it, and so it definitely feels alien to me, but it does make sense to have your hands up like this, as opposed to having them flat, like on a keyboard. But I can definitely see certain professionals wanting to go for this instead of a standard all-button layout, because if you are practicing for eight hours a day playing video games because you're an esports professional pro gamer, and that's a real thing now, and you can make a lot of money from playing video games, it is worth considering the ergonomics because getting operations on your hands, first of all, you can only fix your body so many times in a hospital before it's like a permanent injury. But secondly, I can just feel already that it's going to be less stress on my arms. And more importantly, it's really great that we have an option because I know that there are plenty of people who have quit all button controllers just because they feel like it hurts their arms too much. It probably won't be very popular with casuals because it's just bigger. Quite simply, even though it's more ergonomic, I think most casual players will go for the options that are smaller, thinner, more portable, easier to customize. This is the sort of controller that probably pro players will really love because they can play it for a long time with not as much stress on their hands. And you can customize it in all sorts of fun ways like, you know, maybe getting a bigger one that fits just my hand mold. Maybe I'll be able to like send a mold of my hands to the manufacturer so that they can create a controller that is perfectly for the size of your mahusive hands or for your teeny tiny petite hands. Whatever it is, I definitely see a future in highly customized professional grade controllers for specific players. In its current state though, I think an ergonomic controller like this, it's going to be very difficult to find a layout that actually suits everyone. Something that's going to be comfortable for everyone to use. I kind of want to see the future of where they're going to go. And I, I, I would also really like to see if it is possible to have a model that does satisfy everyone. A few more formality things. I mean, these three buttons at the top, you've probably been wondering what they are. They are options, home, and share in that order. And then on the back, you've got 
a touchpad button, the turbo settings button, which also helps you change the modes of the controller, and you've got an L3 and an R3 button. And the L3 button is quite helpful because in a PC version of Street Fighter V, you can also use it for things like resetting the stage. So if I'm over here on the right and I press L3, you can use that to restart. Listen up, I'm going to leave it there for the Vertibox controller, just give you a close look at it. All my feedback is exactly what I've said so far. I think as an idea, this Vertibox does work. And I think it could be quite popular with professional players, players who play, you know, practice for many hours on end per day. And I definitely see a market for people asking for very highly customized versions of this controller. For example, people with smaller hands, people with larger hands, people with, you know, people who want much wider spacing or smaller spacing, or people who want this tilted angle here on the right, or people who want this to be completely flat, so it's easier to press two buttons at the same time. I can see a lot of people wanting customized versions of this. What I don't really see right now is it becoming very popular with casual players or just a large number of players because quite simply it's more bulky to carry around than even an arcade stick. This is going to just be an unwieldy thing to walk around with in its current state. But I'm 100% open to the idea that this thing could get smaller and smaller until they've optimized it to the shape and size that it really needs to be until maybe it's no bigger than like a large pro controller. My last point I will make about this controller though is that it is already on sale and the price they're asking for is $370. Now for a niche boutique product, that's fine. A a anyone who wants this is probably a very specific kind of customer. This is obviously not working on a mass produced scale at the moment. So as a really niche product, $370 is quite normal for something that is probably, you know, they maybe they only make a few of these every every week and then they ship them to the very few people who are asking them for. My only criticism is that it does have this error, like you can't do SOCD jumps properly on the left side. So this needs to be fixed. But once you fix that, then, you know, sell them away at any price that you want. My personal opinion, I really want to see a second version of this and one that works much better for me with flat sides over here, with the buttons closer together. And of course, with those firmware issues fixed. That's pretty much it for the Vertibox, but if you want to see another crazy, funky, weird controller, then definitely click on this video right here. It's going to be right up your alley. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, like the video, and I would love if you could leave a comment. Is this really the perfect controller that you've been waiting for? Or are you kind of disgusted by, the, by even the concept of something like this? And you're like, get it off my screen. I don't want to see it. That's all for now. See you next time.